One love, this is Aya Fire, the human tree of life here in the heart of Jamaica. Sending love to your beating hearts. Sending love to all beating hearts. I'm here by the river with my two daughters having a wash. So if there's noises, disturbances, if the river's making noise and my daughters are shouting, <laughs> I apologize for that. My philosophy is simple, really. I, I know I use a lot of philosophizing and big words and stuff like that, but really, it all boils down to love. It's just about love. That's all it, it's simple, just love. The more we love, the more we're gonna get given by the universe things to love. It's simple. Let's stay connected. 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 We are one with the birds and the bees. We are one with the flowers and the trees. We are one with the rivers and the seas. <laughs> we are one. Oh, we are one. Let's live in love and unity. That's the way it's got to be. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. <laughs> Let's stay connected, man. Let's not separate ourselves. We're one big family. We're one with everything. And when we realize this, we can just relax in the notion everything is love. So I'm going to read some more from Neville Goddard's Feeling is the Secret. It's the final chapter. There's only three chapters in this book. An amazing book. You can check my other videos if you haven't heard it before, if you want to listen to the other two chapters. This last chapter is called Prayer. And Neville Goddard starts by saying, Prayer, like sleep, is also an entrance into the subconscious. Prayer is an illusion of sleep, which diminishes the impression of the outer world and renders the mind more receptive to suggestion from within. The mind in prayer is in a state of relaxation and receptivity, akin to the feeling attained just before dropping off to sleep. Now I'm saying this, now it's not in the book. But when Neville Goddard talks about prayer, he's not talking about supplicating to some God in the sky. It's a relationship between the conscious and the subconscious mind. So Neville Goddard continues by saying, prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. The only condition required is that you believe that your prayers are already realized. Your prayer must be answered if you assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your objective. The moment you accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious finds means for its realization. To pray successfully then, you must yield to the wish, that is, feel the wish fulfilled. The perfectly disciplined man is always in tune with the wish as an accomplished fact. He knows that consciousness is the one and only reality. The ideas and feelings are facts of consciousness and are as real as objects in space. Therefore, he never entertains a feeling which does not contribute to his happiness, for feelings are the cause of the actions and circumstances of his life. On the other hand, the undisciplined man finds it difficult to believe that which is denied by the senses and usually accepts 
or rejects solely on appearances of the senses. Because of this tendency to rely on the evidence of the senses, it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray, before attempting to feel that which they deny. Whenever you are in the state of mind, I should like to, but I cannot, the harder you try, the less you are able to yield to the wish. You never attract that which you want, but always attract that which you are conscious of being. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. When the senses confirm the absence of your wish, all conscious effort to counteract this suggestion is futile and tends to intensify the suggestion. Prayer is the art of yielding to the wish and not the forcing of the wish. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will be the victor. The dominant feeling invariably expresses itself. Prayer must be without effort in attempting to fix an attitude of mind which is denied by the senses. Effort is fatal. To yield successfully to the wish as an accomplished fact, you must create a passive state, a kind of reverie or meditative reflection similar to the feeling which precedes sleep. In such a relaxed state, the mind is turned from the objective world and easily senses the reality of a subjective state. It is a state in which you are conscious and quite able to move or open your eyes, but have no desire to do so. An easy way to create this passive state is to relax in a comfortable chair or on a bed. If on a bed, lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body. Close the eyes and imagine that you are sleepy. Feel, I am sleepy, so sleepy, so very sleepy. In a little while, a faraway feeling accompanied by a general lassitude and loss of all desire to move envelops you. You feel a pleasant, comfortable rest are not inclined to alter your position, although under circumstances you would not be at all comfortable. When this passive state is reached, imagine that you have realized your wish, not how it was realized, but simply the wish fulfilled. Imagine in picture form that which you desire to achieve in life. Then feel yourself as having already achieved it. Thoughts produce tiny little speech movements which may be heard in the passive state of prayer as pronouncements from without. However, this degree of passivity is not essential to the realization of your prayers. All that is necessary is to create a passive state and feel the wish fulfilled. All you can possibly need or desire is already yours. You need no helper to give it to you. It is yours now. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. As the end is accepted, you become totally indifferent as to the possible failure. For acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. When you emerge from the moment of prayer, it is as though you were shown the happy and successful end of a play, although you were not shown how that end was achieved. However, having witnessed the end, regardless of any anticlimactic sequence, you remain calm and secure in the knowledge that the end has been perfectly denied. And I, I said there was three chapters, but there's four, it's just, but it's only two pages. The last chapter, chapter four, Spirit. Basically, just a page and a half, really. It's very short. This and this. <laughs> so I'm going to read it quickly. Chapter four, Spirit, Feeling. 
Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I say that again because there's a truck passing. <laughs> Not by might, nor by power, but, but, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's from the Bible. Get into the spirit of the state desired by assuming the feeling that would be yours where you already the one you want to be. As you capture the feeling of the state sought, you are relieved of the all effort to make it so. For it is already so. There is a definite feeling associated with every idea in the mind of man. Capture the feeling associated with your realized wish by assuming the feeling that will be yours where you're already in possession of the thing you desire and your wish will objectify itself. Faith is feeling. According to your faith, feeling, be it unto you. You never attract that which you want, but always that which you are. As a man is, so does he see. That which you feel yourself to be, you are. And you are given that which you are. So, assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish and your wish must be realized so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him you are that which you believe yourself to be it is natural to do the works of the one you believe yourself to be so live in the feeling of being the one you want to be and that you shall be. When a man believes in the value of the advice given him and applies it, he establishes within himself the reality of success. And that's the end of the book. Feeling is the secret. <laughs> I'm not gonna be reading any more from this book. I feel it's a very important book. It influenced me a lot. A lot of what I talk about was influenced by this book. And even just the title alone says it all, really. Feeling is the secret. Like I said, philosophizing is cool. But it's simple. Just have love in your heart. Just be loving. Not just in words. It's all about how we feel inside. Each one of us, individually. It's not what's about going on on the outside because our feelings create reality when we realize this we can just relax in the notion everything is love <laughs> and when we do that everything really does become love everything becomes one so what we have to do is stay connected stay connected to the one love Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. We are one with the birds and bees. We are one with the flowers and the trees. We are one with the rivers and the sea. We are one, oh, we are one. Let's live in love and unity. That's the way it's got to be. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. <laughs> Let's stay connected. <laughs> Let's stay connected, man. <laughs>